Welcome to Whispers to a Bride, where we talk about the stuff no one else is talking about. We are going deep on the emotional aspects of getting married, the stress, drama, and turbulence that affects your own sense of identity and your closest relationships. We are talking about what it means to be a bride and how to navigate the sacred time with more grace and ease. I'm your host, Kara Gassabe. As a life coach and therapist, I'm going to be sharing super practical tips so that you can not only rise to the occasion of your wedding, but also your life. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Whispers to a Bride. Today, we are talking about the bridal buffer. And okay, so this idea really has come out of the last few client sessions I've had with brides. And their concern that they brought to me was, how do I make sure on my wedding day, I don't like freak out and have a meltdown? How do I make sure that like my mother doesn't drive me nuts? For two of my clients, it was really specifically about how to handle sort of the energy in the room during that getting ready phase when it came to their mother. In one case, this bride just sort of knew that like whenever like tensions were high, she just like picks a fight with her mom and she didn't really want to do that. And so we talked through that and had to handle that and what she could do ahead of time. But really, we were talking about like on the day of, right? When all of your sort of emotional, mental coping skills are hardest to reach, right? When we are in that fight or flight sort of stressed situation with our nervous system, we're not going to be our best selves. And we're probably not going to pick our newest, most evolved problem-solving skills. What we're probably going to do, which you see a lot around the holiday times when we're around family, especially, we are going to do the thing we've always done, you know, a little more less sophisticated, more childlike reactions are going to be what tend to come out simply because we are under that amount of stress and things are so high and our family's around, which can be just very triggering, not to overuse the word, for a lot of people. Another bride was describing just feeling like she knew that her mother's energy was going to just make her nuts, right? She knew that her mom was going to start talking about how her dress fit and how her hair and makeup looked and just sort of sort of take all of the air out of the room and all of the focus and make it about her and just add a lot of fussiness and drama to the bridal suite. And she just knew that like that was going to make her crazy on her wedding day. And I was just like loving that she knew, right? Because One of the things that I think we do sometimes is like, everything's going to be perfect. It's going to be like the movies. And because we've never done a wedding day for the most part before, we can trick ourselves into believing that there's something really special about a wedding day that like allows for everyone to be on their best behavior and do things that they've never done before. And really, when it comes down to it, people are going to still be who they are. They are going to do the things they always do. And for the people who are very emotionally invested, like the bride, the mom, the closest people, they're really going to be at risk of doing some of their least favorable behaviors because, again, there's so much attention, there's so much fuss, there's so much at stake, the limelight is bright, like a lot's going on, and there's a lot of pressure to like perform and impress the guests and just have everything go a certain way, and everyone's just like very tightly wound oftentimes. So what I really wanted to focus on this episode was what do you do that day of to ensure that you don't fall off the cliff emotionally? After you've done all of the preparation work that we would work together on, there's just the real practical part of the day of. And that is where I like to think of this concept of the bridal buffer, right? Let's put something in between you and the energy that is most likely to throw you off and cause you like just extra pain and suffering and duress that you just know you don't want, right? So whether it's a vendor that you've already been having a tough time with, whether it's a friend that is in your bridal party that maybe things have gotten tricky with, or likely it's 
the mom figure or maybe a sister, something in that close inner circle that is you're going to be exposed to on that wedding day, but that you'd like to make sure you've got a little distance from, that's where you invoke the bridal buffer. And that's actually like a person. And this is just very practical and pragmatic. Like we're going to plan ahead and have you designate a person that's going to be your go-to, right? They're going to be that person who can read the room. You can have like a code word, like, look, when I give you this look, that means like, let's get my mom out of the bridal suite for a minute, or let's steer the conversation away from this topic or whatever it is that you know is going to cause you too much intense emotional reactivity. Let's plan for it and have that person who gets in between you and that, like, I don't want to say trigger because it's like so annoying, but like you and that situation, whether it's the person or the conversation or the topic or whatever it is. So this is just like a really practical way of planning ahead. You can use your wedding planner. They love, I mean, I love a wedding planner. I just do. And I know a lot of them at this point. And they, in addition to doing so much of the logistic work, like to, on the day of, be aware, most of them, be aware of any of these like emotional tricky points so that they can, however, you know, much you want them to, help intervene in some of these sort of tricky interpersonal dynamics. You know, keep an eye on how much, you know, champagne Susie Q is drinking before the event or make sure mom has something to focus on because she's busyness tends to be a way of her coping with her anxiety and her excitement. So I think you can use your wedding planner. But I wanted to think today about using our bridesmaids because if you look back, I mean, I guess I say in Roman times that the bridal party was probably invented to serve as like the witnesses because you needed like 10 witnesses. But then quickly after that, most of the folklore around like why the bride bridal party, like why bridesmaids, was this concept of protecting the bride from evil spirits and also protecting her from like maybe people with bad intentions. And so we feel like that's sort of ridiculous, like this idea of like evil spirits coming at a bride or like weird kidnappers coming at a bride or any of that stuff seems like archaic and weird. And maybe why the bridal party concept is no longer as relevant. And then I was thinking like, actually, instead of always reinventing and modernizing these sort of seemingly archaic wedding situations and traditions, sometimes if you really lean into the history, it reveals itself as like incredibly relevant and modern. And that is what I think is happening here with bridesmaids. I'm like, yes, actually your job is to dress really pretty and look really good and protect the bride from evil spirits. And what do we mean by evil spirits? We just mean toxic energy, right? From any family, friend, vendor, person, like that's going to be your job. You're going to be the energetic keepers of the bride because she is in a vulnerable state, right? And one of the best things that women do for each other is we we just, there's so much intuition and there's so much like shared, like knowing, I feel like in a group of women, when we let ourselves in that sort of relationship with each other, that it can be so powerful. Literally, women can often feel like, okay, the tension is rising in the room. And if you've already given permission to your bridesmaids, like, hey, if you notice this happening, I'd love you to do this. Like if you've given them permission and instruction and a bit of a plan, they are going to do such a beautiful job because we are like born for this kind of caretaking. And I think especially if you, any of the bridesmaids have been married and been through a wedding day, they're especially going to be like, a staunch guardian of your energy and of your sanity on that wedding day. And it's just a really cool, beautiful way of making bridesmaids really relevant again in a way that is just very necessary and often just not talked about, right? I think so much of what's happened with the bridesmaids, it's become like just this dress up thing or a way to rank order your friends and a way to like plan an extravagant trip and all of that stuff is 
is what it is and it's fine and good. But like, let's get back to like, how can you be really useful and really powerful and strengthen your bond, right? With the bride to her bridesmaids. And that is going to be this energetic gatekeeping, this buffering, this just creating a safe space for the bride the morning of her wedding as she's getting ready. She's feeling all kinds of emotions. Her family's feeling all kinds of emotions. Lots of logistics are happening, right? Maybe things are, weather is happening, vendors are happening, guest questions are happening. Things are going crazy. And just to have those people around you, especially the most trusted females around you and have given them this task of like, hey, if you notice I'm getting really quiet, that means I'm getting really scared and nervous. Or if you notice I'm asking for water, it really means like I need you to take me out of this room and get me away from my grandmother or my auntie or whatever it is. Like just telling them ahead of time because you're not sure exactly how you're going to feel as the bride on your wedding day. Some people are cool, like, and it really is fine and things really fall into place and it's steady. Most times it's tricky, right? There's these moments of inflection where like the anxiety really rises, old patterns come with the families and bickering and like stuff happens. And it's just a beautiful thing and a beautiful thing to ask for as a bride of your bridesmaids. And it's a, it's one of those ones where like it costs them no money. It costs them no time. They're already there with you. And often as a bridesmaid, you're not sure exactly what you should be doing. Like, And so this giving people sort of permission and parameters about what you'd like and how they could be most helpful is a wonderful use of your time and your relationships. And I think it's just like a really fun, meaningful, and wildly useful way to be connected, right? Through more than just dresses and pictures and standing there. Because the whole thing can feel kind of hollow when we don't really add that other layer of like, oh yeah, this is what I need. I need you to stand with me. I need you to be there with me. I need you to like celebrate me and have fun with me and plan showers and plan bachelor parties. But oh yeah, I need you to buffer me from the anxiety and the like chaos and the overwhelm on the actual day. That's why I need you close in proximity, getting ready with me, walking with me, standing near me, like helping me with all the logistics, right? Making sure my hair and makeup goes well or this happens, but like, right? Buffering me, reading my emotion and helping me put out little fires. I was just hearing a story of this bride the other day who was like, hated her makeup, but like she was scared to tell the makeup artist. And so the bridesmaid had to help like facilitate that. Like, no, no, you can do this. This makeup artist wants to help you. You deserve to get the makeup you want. Like, how can we do this? Right? Like you can see how she just was that buffer helping get the bride what she needed on that day. And I don't know. I'm just like very into this whole concept of like the bridal buffer. And looking back at my wedding, I'm like, I should have done that. Because you don't know where like the weird energy is going to come from. Like I had like full hecklers telling me not to get married. Of course, we were getting married like five days before Christmas, downtown DC. And there was a Santa pub crawl. So people were like totally drunk and insane and yelling at me. But like, I did not see that coming. And it was very like unsettling. I can laugh about it now. I could have laughed about it like a week before and a week after. But like in the actual moment, it just, I felt so raw and so like, uh, I'm on a street in a wedding gown and like, this is not the energy that I needed in that moment. So it would have been like a great time again to have that buffer and that like help in that moment. So anyway, I'm so into the bridal buffer. I cannot wait to hear what you think about it and how you think about it. And yeah, I just feel like, I feel like it is just giving so much relevance and beauty to the bridal party and the bridesmaids and like there's more to it and there always was right when we look back at history and let's just like bring that back on in let's modernize that whole concept of like protecting you from the evil spirits because in fact we do need that still and always so i hope you have enjoyed this episode you know where to find me book your bridal session now and we can strategize on this or anything else that 
is coming up for you in this really sacred moment of your life. You deserve all of the time and attention and intention and peace and calm and support. And I'm your girl. So wishing you nothing but bridal bliss.